morning, everyone. Thank you for dialing in for today's press conference. Please continue to stand by. We will begin our conference momentarily. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 to be joined into the queue. Record your name and affiliation. And the conference is also being recorded. And if you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Please continue to stand by for today's press conference. It will begin momentarily. You are live at this time. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Congratulations, of course, to the NASA and SpaceX teams on today's return of Crew-6. Joining us for today, for today's post-splashdown teleconference, we have Steve Stitch, Program Manager of the NASA's Commercial Crew Program, Joel Montabano, Program Manager of the International Space Station for NASA, Benji Reed, from SpaceX, and sorry, and Adnine Alres, Assistant Director, General Space Operations and Exploration Sector Mission Manager for the United Emirates United Arab Emirates Astronaut Program. There's going to be uh, opening remarks from each of our speakers, and then we will take questions. Uh, for media on the call, star one to get into the question and answer queue. Steve Stitch, over to you. Thank you, Steve, and uh, thanks to everybody for joining us at, uh, early in the morning here. Um, hey, really exciting uh, last 24 hours for us uh, here at NASA and SpaceX. It's exciting to have Crew-6 uh, back home, splashing down on our sixth ISS crew rotation mission and our seventh overall mission between the Commercial Crew Program and SpaceX. Uh, busy, busy Sunday, as I said, you know, uh, we undocked uh, at about 7 a.m. Eastern time on Sunday, uh, backed away from the space station. Dragon did an awesome job flying away from the space station. We used a little bit of a different approach this time where we flew um, behind the station and about 20 kilometers above to set up um, the phasing for the landing uh, at Jacksonville tonight. So that was the first time we've ever done that uh, uh, in our history of a commercial crew program. Um, the return was delayed a couple of days. We were really looking for good weather. A high pressure system was setting up over the U.S. and moving down uh, over Florida. We took advantage of that uh, today to land successfully. Uh, at about 12.17 a.m. Eastern, uh, just a little while ago. The weather was exactly as we predicted. We've been looking at this weather for about the last uh, 24 to 48 hours. The seas were about um, five feet, a little higher than we've landed in before, but certainly within our um, weather flight rules and the criteria that SpaceX uses to recover the crew, and about a 10-second period on those waves, so you could see the swells, and, and the crew did really well um, in those sea states. 
and the winds were about five knots at landing, so it was uh, a very uh, nice benign landing uh, for the crew. Um, right now, the the helo is landed on the ship, and the crew um, will be uh, departing the ship and heading to um, the rendezvous point. Will they um, do some science operations there, and then they'll fly back to Houston? And the crew was doing really well uh, after landing. They all looked really good coming out of the Dragon capsule. Um, and now, you know, I just would really like to thank the entire um, NASA and SpaceX team for all the hard work. You know, this mission we launched back uh, all the way back in March, and it was a great mission. Did a lot of great science, which I know Joel will talk about. Um, the next steps for this capsule, or um, the plan right now, is it would fly the Crew 8 mission, and that mission would be no other than February of next year. And so, once the vehicle gets back to Dragonland, the SpaceX team will turn that vehicle around, and, and we plan right now to use that vehicle for Crew 8. So again, a huge thanks to the entire team, to the international partners, to the United Arab Immigrants, Emirates, uh, and the FAA, the U.S. Coast Guard, the DOD, um, the, the rescue forces from the DET-3, Detachment-3, um, NOAA, our National Weather Service, uh, played a huge role in the landing, and then also the 45th Weather Squadron. And with that, I will uh, turn it over to Joel. All right. Hey, thank you, Steve, and thank you for joining us, and happy Labor Day to everyone. Uh, outstanding landing, as Steve said. Uh, this crew spent 184 days on board the International Space Station, so adding the day up and the day down, 186 days in space for our crew. Uh, they did just over 3,000, or just under 3,000 orbits of the Earth, and this crew saw seven visiting vehicles come and go to the International Space Station and performed uh, just under 250 experiments in utilization research and technology demonstration. Uh, looking forward, as I'm sure you've heard me talk about, we have a Soyuz launch coming up on September 15th and a Soyuz landing on September 27th. So with that, uh, congratulations to my NASA colleagues, SpaceX, and all our international partners for an outstanding mission. With that, I'll hand it over to Benji out at SpaceX. Thank you, Joel. Uh, just uh, what an awesome night, um, and it's such an honor and so cool to get to be a part of this whole program. Um, we uh, had a great return, as uh, Steve and Joel already said, um, and uh, a huge welcome back to uh, to the Crew-6 crew. Um, uh, this mission has completed our seventh NASA human space flight mission to the International Space Station. Um, it was a nominal return. Um, Dragon is healthy. The parachutes performed as expected, um, and... Um, you know, our recovery teams uh, did great. Um, Dragon did great, and the crew um, appeared to do awesome. Um, and uh, we're getting ready to bring Dragon back to our refurbishment facility uh, at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Um, you know, it's, it's of note, I think, probably, that after just a little bit after splashdown, um, the SpaceX teams uh, also successfully launched our 62nd mission of the year um, uh, from uh, LC-39A in Florida. Um, it's been quite a busy weekend. Um, and it's a, it's a big deal for us. Um, but, uh, you know, as always, our missions to, uh, to the space station, our missions for, Na our missions for NASA um, are our top priority. Um, this means we've flown now 43 times to the ISS for both cargo and crew. We've flown 21 reflown Dragons. We've done 12 human spaceflight missions in total. And that uh, means we've sent uh, 42 humans to space so far. And um, tonight's return was our 10th human spaceflight return, and that uh, actually ties the number of uh, human spaceflight returns uh, from Project Gemini. So uh, huge congratulations to um, the SpaceX teams and, of course, to the NASA teams. Um, the, the joint effort is amazing. And um, for me especially, this is a, a, a really important return. It has an extra special meaning to me. Um, you know, we started this uh, the program to, uh, to be able to help NASA get their astronauts to uh, the station and bring them home um, a number of years ago. And uh, this marks the, uh, the, the final mission that was originally envisioned in the original contract. Um, and uh, what an honor to have been able to be part of this entire, um, you know, cycle so far. And, uh, and, and again, a great honor from NASA um, now that we're continuing with additional missions beyond this original six operational missions. Um, and, uh, again, huge congratulations to the joint teams that are making that happen and continuing to do so. Um, our thank yous, as always, to, uh, to NASA, to Los Cosmos, 
um, to the uh, to UAE, um, and of course to the uh, 45th wing of the Space Force um, for your trust, your partnership, and your close collaboration for this mission. And um, and a really special thank you to all the families um, and friends, um, and um, you know of all of the people who have worked both at NASA and at SpaceX, all of these missions and all of these years. Um, it's a lot of sacrifice that goes into this, both for the people working um, and, of course, for their families. And, and it means a lot um, to be able to do this and do this for the nation, for the world, for all of our international partners. Um, and with that, I'd like to hand it over to uh, Adnan Alaris um, with UAE. Thank you very much. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say a um, big congratulations uh, to NASA and SpaceX on the successful return of the Crew-6 uh, mission. Uh, it has been a really smooth uh, uh, return. And also congratulations to the crew members for completing uh, their mission uh, successfully. Uh, this mission has been a very uh, fabulous, fabulous mission for the UAE. Uh, UAE Aston Sultan Yadi participating in the longest duration mission that an uh, Arab astronaut participated in for six months duration, conducting a lot of science and experiments in cooperation with NASA and ISS uh, partners. We had uh, many education outreach activities, live PO events that we've reached hundreds and thousands of students and different uh, parts of the country as well as the region. It has really great uh, impact, uh, not only in the UAE, but also our region, uh, in order to uh, focus more on the STEM education and support uh, growing the, the space sector uh, in our countries. Uh, uh, again, I would like to thank NASA. We're very grateful for this opportunity to be part of the, uh, this expedition, uh, being part of the Human Space Flight Program. Uh, it's an important uh, milestone uh, for the UAE Human Space Flight Program. And we're looking forward to continuing and expanding this cooperation with future missions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, for media, again, star one to uh, get into the queue if you have a question. A quick um, informational update that the crew has begun loading aboard the uh, helicopter aboard the recovery vessel. A little update there. First, we have uh, Stephen Clark from Ars Technica. Go ahead, Stephen. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I think mine's probably for Benji. Uh, are you still planning up to 15 flights per a uh, crew dragon spacecraft uh as, as you get into flying these capsules more and more are you learning anything about how they need to be refurbished that could refine that number 15 up or down and uh also any update on the on the new crew dragon that's uh, uh under construction where is that right now in assembly and test and do you have a mission uh on the horizon assigned for that to debut thanks yeah, great. Thanks for the question. Um, that new capsule is coming along well. Um, uh, you know, we'll see exactly uh, how the timing works out to see if that uh, w which mission that will be uh, assigned to. Um, my sense is that um, if things move along the way they're doing, it'll be it'll be pretty soon in the next uh, couple flights or so. We'll see, um, but uh, not a specific mission tag to yet. Um, and then, um, uh, oh, your question about uh, reuse. So uh, yeah, 15 flight reuse is our is our target. Um, obviously, we need to absolutely make sure that that's safe um, and, uh, and understand um, all of what we need to do, you know, in addition to the refurbishment that we already do to get to five flight reuse. Um, but uh, we definitely want to try to get up to 15 flight reuse. All of the data so far continues to indicate that that's possible. Um, and, um, and it, it, you know, critically, we're working with our NASA partners to, to ensure that this makes sense, um, you know, with them as well and that we can certify the vehicle to do that. Um, I would expect a certain amount of, you know, additional refurbishment um, that has to be done. Um, and we're, uh, you know, moving forward as we investigate that. But I, I'm, I'm very optimistic uh, on getting up to 15. Thank you, Benji. Next is Bill Harwood, CBS News. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, thanks, Steve. Uh, two quick ones from me. One for uh, Steve. Uh, and I might have missed this earlier. If I did, I apologize. But um is the crew being flown from, from Jacksonville back to Houston or from the Cape back to Houston? And do you know when, when Sultan and yeah, Bill, Thank we heard the first clear. part of your question, but we the second part cut out a little bit. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, Steve. Um, no, the question was, um, do the crew fly to Jacksonville or to here before going to Houston? And I realize it's just a stop to get on a plane, but just out of curiosity, do we know when Sultan and Andre will head back to their home agencies? And a question for Benji, uh, you mentioned the Starlink launch tonight, and I, I was just curious if there was a, a reason SpaceX has decided not to put Starlinks on YouTube anymore, the Mission Audio channel and the webcast in favor of uh, the the X broadcast, which offers some limitations from a reporter standpoint. I just didn't know if that's cost related or manpower or or, or, or what that was based on. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll, I'll take the first question and let others answer the, uh, the other two questions. Uh, yeah, the crew right now they're going to fly um, from the from the recovery ship. They'll get on the helo. They'll fly to Jacksonville and. Uh, and that's where they'll meet up with the NASA aircraft, and then they'll fly from there back to Houston. And then uh, we'll let. Yeah. yeah, with regards to Sultan Niyadi, so he'll spend like 14 days here in Houston. Uh, and after that, he'll be back to the UAE for almost a week. Uh, then again, he'll be back here in Houston to uh, conduct the, you know, the, the science and experiments in the, uh, the recovery plan. Great, yeah, and, and Bill, I, I don't know. I actually was uh, just uh, paying attention to the, the data and the telemetry, and uh, and so uh, I don't really have an answer to your question, but uh, um, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, folks. Um, next is Marcia Smith from Space Policy Online. Go ahead, Marcia. Uh, thanks so much. Can you hear me? Yeah, you be loud and clear. Okay, uh, so. I had a follow-up to Stephen Clark's question about reuse of the Dragon. So you're going to fly this one again in February, which is, I think, just five months from now. So I'm curious, so what is the turnaround time that you're aiming for? Is five months sort of the standard that you're going to have for the future? Or are you trying to make it four months or three months? I'm just curious as to uh, how quickly you can turn these around. And on a completely different note, I'm, I had a question for Joel about Frank Rubio's return because he's getting ready to come back. And I'm just curious, are there any special procedures or preparations that he needs to go through getting ready to return because he's been there for a year instead of six months? Uh, I'll, I'll take the first question, see if Benji has anything to add. Um, yeah, let's see. For this particular uh, uh, Crew Dragon endeavor, uh, Crew 8 will be the fifth flight of that vehicle, and we've already certified the vehicles for five reuses, and so we'll go through that process. Um, this is about the typical time to turn turn the vehicles around. Uh, certainly five or six months is, is certainly easily achie achievable uh, to turn the vehicles around based on what we've seen from SpaceX. We'll work hand in hand with uh, Benji's team and SpaceX as we work through the, diff the different things on the vehicle. That will um, one of the things we want to really do when we get this vehicle back is, you know, we've talked a little bit about uh, the prop system and corrosion on the valves, and we'll want to look at those. Uh, of course, that problem was discovered after this vehicle was already in space, and so we'll take a little bit of time to to look at that system and then get it turned around. And and uh, the target again is the Crew 8 flight, no earlier than February. And I'll hand it over to Joel for the second part of the question. So, a hey, good question. Thank you. Um, you know, Frank, Dimitri, and Sergey will be up there 371 days when they land. So they'll do the standard fluid loading that all crews do. Um, what really drives their their um, their ability to adapt is the exercise that they're doing. And so we've been working the exercise protocols throughout their expedition. Uh, once they get to the ground, though, the team will work at the crew's pace. So if the crew needs the ground to go a little slower in Kazakhstan, that's what the ground will do. Uh, but no special things other than just working at the crew's pace when they land. Good question. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Um, next, we have Will Robinson-Smith of Space Flight Now. Go ahead, Will. Yes, hi, thanks for taking our questions this evening. Um, I guess a, a question on performance for this particular Dragon, um, you know, in, in the 
pre-return conversations, we, one of the items that was being watched in addition to the, the valves with the parachutes. So I was wondering if uh, either Steve or, or Benji could comment on the performance of the shoot tonight and if that was pretty much in line with what you were hoping to see. Thanks. Yeah, sure. I can jump in and then Steve can add to it. Uh, it you know, shoots look really nominal, look great, really beautiful. Um, you know, the uh, velocities of, you know, during deploy, drugs and mains and, and then uh, overall the deploy, um, we're not tracking any, any anomalies or anything that looks out of character. Obviously, we'll look at the data very closely, um, you know, the, the telemetry data and the recorded data. We'll, uh, we'll look at the video, um, all the various videos closely and make sure, but uh, everything was great so far. I don't have much to add, Benji. I mean, both the drugs look like they deployed nominally. You know, it's a little hard to see in the IR imagery. We'll go review all that data. Um, the mains deployed uh, just fine. They all seem to inflate uh, nominally about at the same time. And as Benji said, the, the, the descent rates were, were nominal right down the middle. We'll do what we always do. Um, SpaceX will recover those chutes um, out of the water, get them back on the ship. Uh, we'll take them back. They'll go back to the vendors. They'll get inspected by the joint SpaceX and NASA teams, and we'll look um, at the shoots and then we'll also look at all the imagery in much, much detail and uh, make sure that we – and that's what we continue to do every flight. We continue to learn step-by-step uh, step on each one of these flights, and uh, but in real time, everything looked very nominal. Okay, thank you, everyone. That uh, wraps up our media questions this morning. So we are going to uh, wrap up our media telecon and uh, again convey our congratulations to the NASA and SpaceX teams on this Crew 6 return this morning, this Labor Day. That is going to end it for us. Everyone, have a good morning. Thank you. This does conclude today's conference call. We thank you all for participating. You may now disconnect and have a great rest of your day.